For this video, I've gathered 20 terminologies that developers encountered them at least a couple of times. Please note that there are more than these 20 terminologies, but for the sake of this video, we will focus on 20 terms. Let us start with the first terminology, which is API. API stands for Application Programming Interface. The pure definition of an API is a software intermediary that allows two or more applications to talk to each other. The API showcases all the different functionalities and services this software can offer. As a developer, you order a functionality or a piece of data from the software. Then the API handles your order or your request. This API, who acts as an intermediary between you and the software, responds with the result of the requested operation. So in a nutshell, the API acts like a waiter, facilitating communication between two or more applications. Next, we have algorithm. The definition of an algorithm is a step-by-step -step instructions or rules designed to perform a specific task or to solve a problem. Like the following example is considered an algorithm. Open your text editor, create a Python file, write print hello world, and run your Python file. This is a simple example of an algorithm that illustrates a step-by-step -step procedure to follow. And we use algorithms in our daily lives. Like you have a recipe which describes step-by-step -step instructions you need to follow in order to get a tasty cake. Data structures. The pure definition is the following. In computer science, data structure is the organization, management, and storage format that is chosen for efficient data retrieval. You have an application and you need to store the user's data. How will you do it? What data structure you'll use? Will you use an array? a stack or a queue, a hash table. So data structures is simply the format of storing data, and each format differ from the other in terms of efficiency and simplicity, because you're not just storing data, you are managing it and working with it. And these actions need to be done efficiently. In programming, recursion or a recursive function is a function that calls itself multiple times to solve a certain problem. To compute the factorial of 4, for example, we can use a recursive function, and you can better understand recursion using the following animation. So always a recursive function should have a base case. It is the only block of code that can stop the recursive function. Next we have the recursive call. And here is where the function does its job by calling itself multiple times. And at the end, it computes the result, which in our case, the factorial of 4 is 24. Next we have big O notation. In programming, to calculate the time taken by an algorithm, as the input grows, we use big O. It is written O and function of n, where n represents the input size. The common notation you'll see is linear time. Consider the linear search algorithm if you want. If it receives 10 elements, the algorithm should iterate 10 times. So the running time grows linearly as the input size increases. Of course, keep in mind that there is other notations. An IDE stands for Integrated Development Environment. It is a software application that provides tools and features to be able to write and run a program. You can find in any IDE features like code editor, compiler or interpreter, debugger, version control, plugins, and extensions. The most popular IDE you can find is VS Code. A compiler is a specialized program that translates code into machine language. The entire code written in compiled languages like C, C++, and Java will be converted at once to machine language before execution. However, interpreted languages are completely different. So these languages, for example, Python is an interpreted language and it uses an interpreter, which basically has the same job as a compiler to convert code to machine language. But unlike a compiler who converts source code all at once to machine language, an interpreter converts the source code line by line to machine language. Version control systems are systems that manage changes to a project source code. The primary purpose of VCS is to track modifications to a file facilitate collaboration among developers, and provide the ability to go back to previous states in the project. The most popular VCS is Git. It has a lot of features you can use, like push, which means uploading changes to a repository, and pull means fetching changes from a repository. There's also branching, merging, and much more. A repository is a storage location where files, directories, and their history is stored. All the actions you did using a version control system must be stored in a repository. You need to know that there is two types of repositories. The first one is local repository. It is a storage within your personal computer. The second one is a remote repository. It is a storage hosted on platforms like GitHub. Instead of storing your work on your local machine, you store them on GitHub. This option is useful if you need to share your work with others. Object-oriented programming is a type of programming paradigm that organizes code around objects. Simply, all the code is placed inside a class which acts as the blueprint. Inside the class, you define the attributes and behavior of each object created. And an object of a class is also called an instance of this certain class. Some languages like Java are languages that are purely object-oriented. 
That means everything is inside a glass. The Onion Router or Tor is a browser that you can download just like any other browser. But what makes Tor so different from the browsers you know is the privacy it offers for users because it encrypts user data in layers just like the layer of an onion. Not to forget, and it is the most important information to mention, it's that Tor connects you to the dark web, the part of the internet that is hidden and can't be accessed with normal web browsers. Being that hidden, Tor is known to host some of the most illicit marketplaces. Starting with IP or internet protocol, it acts as the identifier for each device connected to the internet. Transmission Control Protocol is a protocol that aims to transfer data and distribute these packets across the internet. A router is a networking device that routes the data packets to the correct destination. It also serves to connect a LAN to the internet. In this concept, data is transformed into small packets by TCP, with each of its source IP and destination IP. These packets are sent to different routers that route these data packets to the closest route based on the destination IP. Both HTTP and HTTPS are protocols that allows a client like a web browser and a web server to communicate with each other. The client or a web browser sends a request to the server, which should provide with a response. But what differs between HTTP and HTTPS is that with HTTP, data is sent as plain text. It is completely visible if someone tried to intercept the network. However, with HTTPS, which uses a technology called TLS, it makes sure that the communication between client and server is secure and encrypts data sent and received. Cloud computing is a technology that aims to deliver computing services over the internet, such as storage and computing power, which are the main resources offered. A cloud service provider offers cloud computing services. Cloud computing can be categorized in three main models. IaaS or Infrastructure as a Service, which offers virtualized computing resources such as virtual machines. PaaS or Platform as a Service provides tools and services for application development. And SaaS or Software as a Service is the delivery of a fully functional software over the internet. A container is a software package that has every tools needed to run a piece of software like runtime, libraries, and system tools. Containers can encapsulate the application and its dependencies, allowing it to run in other environments. They are also portable and can run on any system and they are very efficient. Docker is a containerization platform widely used by developers. A framework is a pre-built and reusable structure that provides a foundation for building a software application. Ever heard of this following saying, don't reinvent the wheel? Well, frameworks allow you to not reinvent the wheel. Frameworks offer reusable code written by other developers, which you can use in your project, and this increases your productivity. Popular frameworks like Django for Python, Spring Boot for Java, and React for JavaScript. High-level languages are languages that can be easily understood by humans and provides abstraction from underlying hardware, meaning it lets developers focus on solving problems rather than focusing on machine-specific details. They are also known to be easily read due to their syntax, and the most popular high-level programming language is Python. Low-level languages are languages that tend to be more closer to hardware, like machine language and assembly language. They offer more control over computer hardware and requires basic understanding in computer hardware. Code written in these languages tends to be harder from code written in high-level languages due to little or no abstraction. A bug in software is referred to an error or a flaw from a computer program, which results in errors or unexpected output. These bugs can be syntax error, like missing a semicolon, logical error, mean there's no syntax error but the program is not working as you expect, and runtime error, which is an error that occurs during runtime. To fix bugs, we can debug our program. Debugging is the process of going through your program line by line and try to analyze and resolve your program. And these are 20 terminologies I wanted to share with you. Please make sure to comment below any terminologies you know and want to share with us. Other than that, thank you for watching. Make sure to check out one of these videos that will appear right now. And I hope to see you in one of these videos.